I think the, one of the reasons I think that um, maybe our imagination sometimes becomes a little stunted and um, uninspired is is often because of the stories we've been told or the metaphors that right. kind of dominate our, our thinking. For me personally, um, over the last few years, this idea of God as the one birthing. So, so it's 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 enough of a shift in um, understanding God as um, I think a lot of times maybe our mentality becomes, what am I supposed to do? Mm. What am I supposed to bring into being? Mm. Even in our sense of like looking for calling or vocation, you know, these are the things that I'm giving birth to in the world. But when we switch it and say, what is God birthing? Mm. And how do I, um, how do I support or enter in or participate? Yep. That question leads us to, um, what does it mean to be attendants yeah. or midwives? Yeah. To the and you know, something I hear pastors, church leaders all the time talk using this phrase, like we're joining God mm. in what he's doing, or uh, we're joining God in the neighborhood or joining in the mission of God. So I, I hear that language, mm. but there aren't the metaphors that go along Good point. with it. So, so, true. so when you ask them, well, how, how do you, how do you see what God is doing? Mm. How do you join that? How, well, tell me what that means they kind of stumble a little, a little at that point. So mm -hmm. they've kind of got the idea, oh, God is at work in my neighborhood. And they talk about joining God, but then they just run stuff. <laughs> that reminds me of the gal we met yesterday, yeah. actually, the, the yoga teacher, yoga business owner. Yeah. So she owns the studio, um, and she is heading up one of San Diego's biggest yoga festivals coming up, and it's going to be along the beach. Mm. So we... Um, and she's a devout follower of Jesus. She is, yeah. She expressed how uh, people come to yoga also out of like a spiritual longing. Yep. They get to this place of openness, and then they and sh the way she put it was they say, "What's next?" What's, oh, yeah, I'll say it at the same yeah. time. What's next? <laughs> That's true, <laughs> isn't it? Like they so have a powerful. taste of something, right? So there's got to be something more, yeah. Right, and she she you know what would it what is it what would it be like in those in those relationships to say hey we could guide you to what's next yeah. to the spirit the holy spirit yeah. and for her she even said you know i've tried sending them and in that place to a church and they're like ah, you know it does, just doesn't fit the misalignment with what they're trying to uh, what they're looking for maybe but you know the thing i liked about uh, meeting her yesterday was it's a massive undertaking to do this mm -hmm. like it's like one of the biggest sort of yoga classes like up in all right. these different venues all over you know ocean beach and so it's exhausting and overwhelming and and then you spoke yeah. into her life and just said well like maybe reframe it this way this is something god is doing and you're attending to, right. to this well we, sh we, sh we shared the midwife me metaphor yeah, exactly and i yeah. saw like she like literally yeah like, she she like excited. fell back in yeah. her seat yeah Finally, it felt like the burden had been lifted. I'm not birthing this. God is birthing this. Right. And, but that's not to say, oh, okay, well, I can just no, stop working. Exactly. So it's all the, still the same level of work and engagement, engagement. Yeah, and, and, and excellence. I mean, she's an excellent yoga teacher and leader and planner. She's an and cultural influencer in our city. Yeah. Um, but but sh understanding that the burden, like the, the actual, what the responsibility of what's being birthed is, is God's. Yeah not hers she's attending which is just it was it was it was really wonderful to see visibly see her lighten in that sense yeah well and you know it uh, obviously it is a peculiarly feminine mm. metaphor true uh so you can have metaphors with respect to you know the armed forces or being an ambassador or a herald and i mean they mm -hmm. they generally presume to be male metaphors but they can be Female. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, but generally speaking, midwives are women, and there's no question that people giving birth, God, is like a woman, and in that mm. respect, it's a very feminine metaphor, which is going to shake some people and mm. disturb some people too. But I think it's also extremely helpful in light of what we've just been saying, that for some men, and I don't think it's all men, but for some men, they are very activist and mm. very mm -hmm. engaged, and there's they have an on or an off switch. You know, mm. they. They're in, happening, doing, working, achieving, you know, winning, mm -hmm. saving, or they're out. Um, whereas the midwife metaphor actually invites you to always be both yeah, on so and off at the same time. You, 
you have to develop the rhythm of being able to withhold so great. Uh, or to be silent or to mm. say nothing or to step back or, and at other times step in mm. make a suggestion uh, so it's it's the finessing of this like mm. on and off thing that i think some people will have great difficulty with uh mm. more so actually than whether it's a feminine metaphor mm. or not uh, whereas i actually find um i don't want to be kind of too gender specific but it seems as though a lot of women are a lot better at this this attentiveness without having to control mm. um, this sort of uh, openness and engagement without mm. having to to be in charge of something uh, it's a desperately important skill I think for mm. lots of pastors in particular mm. I know we're not just talking about pastors but lots of pastors and church leaders um, it's it's desperately needed skill really isn't it oh yeah and with and at its heart is this um, ability to to listen mm. And uh, to listen really well to, to our own hearts, listen really well to God, listen yeah. really well to our place, which I think we would all agree, you know, that that's a, a core missional practice. Mm. Uh, but what we learn from the midwife, the, particularly the midwife posture, is um, this, uh, this lifelong listening. So with a midwife, even, even if she becomes the, the most renowned expert midwife, she never, like it's, it's really remarkable how midwives will never claim their expertise. Mm. Like, because they're constantly, it's not about them. It's always about what the birthing mother mm. uh, is, is about to do, of which she is trusting and knowing that it's going to be always something surprising. Mm. Which I think if you relate that to the way we interact with God in the world and what God is birthing in the world, it, it puts us in the right place to be able to be in awe of mm. our God mm. Mm. Uh, and, and really look at the wonder. I mean, that's the, that's the unknowable mysteries of God, mm. right? The ongoing, you know, un, even peace that passes understanding. I think that's just such a biblical way of mm. being with God in the world, mm. that God would be doing things that we will never fully understand. And that's what the, that's the, that's how we can kind of relate that metaphorically with the right. midwife. And look, I think it, I think people, uh, not even people in the uh, midwifing profession, can relate to this. I, I think, mm. you know, in my role as a teacher, I could oh, yeah. I could just teach the same. I could maybe even be like a robot and just say <clears throat> the same lectures year in and year out. But I know that every class is mm. different depending on who is in that class and what the interactions are and what their histories are. And right. So people will say, oh, you've taught that, that subject for so many years now, does it ever kind of get mm. stale? Part of it is a good teacher is always updating their work, but the other thing too is no one class is ever mm. the same. What a good uh, point. And so the reactions, the interreactions, the interrelationships, the different histories, the different cultures that they bring always shape each, mm. although it's the same class, each uh, moment differently. And I think... So Anyone good. who does work with people <laughs> yeah, will yeah. have some level of that. Uh, pastors would understand that too. I mean, well, yeah, you'd hope. <clears throat> you would hope. So and and would, we do hope. We do hope. And so, therefore, it would then make sense, of course, like listening to to my neighbourhood. Uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> being attentive to what God is doing. You can't just like set and forget. Like, oh, I did that. Mm. When I first moved into San Diego, I did all the research and. Mm. Read all the yes, books and yeah, went to all the websites. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, okay, now I understand. Yeah, yeah. Like this is a constantly changing city. Each neighborhood so is true. constantly so changing. True. So the idea that you could like know a place and and have it mm. down, that's just naivete. And also, how do we help develop people to understand the signs of birth? Yeah, that's the other component because I think sometimes we still we think birth. So this kind of fits also with the viewpoint or the, or the world view of a midwife where you think of birth as, you know, it should be quick, it should pro be progressive, it, should, it has stages and it moves forward and it's all, you know, right. it's all happy and you have the baby and yay, you take the baby home. Reality is it's, it's kind of a mess. It's yep. very unpredictable. Right. Sometimes it's really long. There's yep. a lot of pain. Sometimes everything stops. Sometimes everything stops yep. and you thought you were on the right track yep. and you think of it as failure. Sometimes the very things that we considered as failures or, uh, or, or roadblocks become our pathway to deeper growth and deeper understanding and more waiting mm. um, as, as, as we trust the process of birth. Mm. Um, so identifying signs, I think, has been an interesting also yeah. kind of story metaphor in that sense. And, um, and even welcoming 
points of, of stillness, welcoming, welcoming seasons, welcoming moments when nothing's happening yeah. and understanding that something is still happening even if you don't see it. The stirrings of growth are not as um, flashy and extravagant as sometimes we, as sometimes we kind of want them to be. Yeah.